hey, Swedish therapist here. So I'm going to be whispering more because it's around 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I know. I just woke up. I, I told you you're going to get me in every way you can. Um, yeah, and there's no reason for me to be fancy and take a shower and do all that. And this is what happens in the morning. Uh, I can't sleep because my allergies start to kick in and I can't breathe. So um, time to wake up and have an allergy pill, which... I'm not the happiest about taking the allergy pills, but as you know, and I've, as I've told you, I've, I eat oranges for the vitamin C to help my um, collagen because the allergy pills dry me out. And so this is the reason that we're here today to talk about important things, things you deserve to know. Young people and common folk, can we do things differently? Can we, can we think in a new direction? I mean, and this I am so serious about because I saw somebody's mom yesterday. Actually, I saw two moms yesterday and, uh, and, and a man that's never had children, but this, the last woman that I saw for Bahana went to her house, Hembasuk because a friend of hers called me and said, um, you helped me with my back, can you help so-and-so? And I said, I don't know, I, I don't know so-and-so. So, so-and-so um, so -so called me in the morning and, and uh, you could tell by her voice that she just did not feel good. I, I, don't, even, I don't even need to have uh, Swedish as a, semi second language, um, you could tell this woman did not feel good by the voice because this is what these ears are for. There's, there's also hearing, but there's this little bit of spidey sense and it's wrapped up with all of our sensations. And we have this idea that, yeah, I know it's sticking up. <laughs> we have this idea that Hearing is just for hearing. But all of our senses have these fascial net membranes that, that go right into that third uh, um, skin. Thank you, Dr. Antonio Stecco for making things so easy to explain. So our spidey sense, and it says something's not right. So I, I go up to, uh, um, uh, um, Robert's mom and I meet her and I can tell right away she's old school Swedish and my little bit of Swinglish is really challenging but she's in pain so what am I gonna do walk out the door all right so I've been in this business for about 20 years there's some things that I've studied there's some things that I know and, and this is why I'm doing this video right now at six in the morning is because can we think in a different direction? She went to the doctor. She's been in pain for three weeks. She walks and her butt sticks out and her, and, and her body's like this tilted forward and, and she's shuffling. It's not because she can't pick up her feet, it's because her hips don't work. And the doctor sent her home with medication for pain. Again, can we start thinking in a different direction? Um, what I would like is, is somebody shows up in the doctor's office and says, this is what I have. And that person can't leave until the doctor figures it out. That'd be great. That'd be so great. It's not just, let me sign this little piece of paper here, take this pill and uh, off you go. I got another person coming in in 10 minutes. So my mom went to a lot of doctors and bless their hearts. I knew a lot of these doctors and they're good people. They're really good people. I used to babysit for some of them. 
So they were moms and they were dads. But here's the thing. My mom and all of her pain syndromes that she's had in the 1980s and 1990s, when she was given Celebrex and then she was given Viox or she was giving Viox and then she was giving Celebrex and then lo and behold, those were taken off the market because they mess around with the heart. Oh, and years later, my mom develops heart issues with hypertension and where did it come from? Okay, yeah, 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 her, her, her father had that too. He also smoked, he was in the military twice. He went to World War II with the Navy and then he signed back up and went into the army. I mean, that does something to the heart. And they smoked. My mom never smoked a thing in her life. Yeah, she tried one cigarette, she threw up and she never tried it again. My mom didn't drink alcohol. She took really good care of herself. She walked on a regular basis. Um, she ate healthy. She read all the Weight Watchers things. She wouldn't allow me to have any nuts in the house. She wouldn't allow me to eat avocados because they were full of fat. This was the 1980s. So medicine changes, but here's where medicine is not changing fast enough for me and young people and common folk. You can hear a little bit of anger in my voice. You can hear a little bit of frustration in my voice because it bothers me. And uh, in English, we have this phrase, uh, um, well, probably in the United States down south. Um, it sticks in my craw. Here's a fun word. Yeah, it sticks in my craw. I don't even know if you can find craw in the dictionary. But when it, something sticks in your craw, it, it is underneath the skin deep and that spidey sense is going and it is bothersome. Oh, also it chaps my hide. And uh, if you've ever had chapped hide or if you're an animal with chapped hide, it hurts and it bleeds and it doesn't feel good. So in the 1980s, my mom goes all to these doctors and then in the 1990s and she has all these pain syndromes and she's eventually diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Okay, fine. So then let's give her a pill for that. But no one's ever worked with her body. There's, there's no doctor for body sense. So dear young people and common folk, can we think in a new direction or a different direction? Because it's out there. I'm not making this up. Look. Look at this big book. It's thick. It's so, so thick. Okay, so Dr. Janet Travell, doctor, MD. Dr. David Simons, doctor, MD, medical doctor. Dr. Janet Travell was the White House doctor for John F. Kennedy. And maybe some of you will remember John F. Kennedy. Um, he was the first Catholic in the, uh, the, the Oval Office for the United States. And that was, that was crazy that they would elect a Catholic. Times change. Anyway, uh, John F. Kennedy, who also goes by the nickname Jack, which is crazy because his first name is John, but then his smackdown would be Jack. Does that make any sense? No, I know. English is funny. So Dr. Janet Travell helped uh, um, John F. Kennedy because he had a lot of pain. And he had a lot of pain in his spine. And I believe he was diagnosed with something called Addison's disease. Addison's disease, you can look that up. I, I can't tell you much about it, but I believe that's what he was diagnosed with. And so he had a lot of pain in his body. Well, the thing is he has a job to do. He has to run the country. So how does he run the country with all this pain? And I'm sure he takes medicine and that probably dims him down cognition wise, 
but Dr. Janet Travell was there and she's like, okay, you do this, 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 this. So you swim every day. So he did every day and usually naked, but that's another story that can be details can be filled in later, but he swam every day and she put him in a rocking chair so that he would actually rock because the body loves movement. It loves to breathe, it loves to move. And why? We've talked about this. Mechanic truc, mechanical truc. This is part of that biotensegrity thing. It has to, it has to have a push and a pull. And it has to be logom. Logom, great word. Because once we're logom, we adapt. And it's totally involuntary. We don't have to think about it. It's our physiology. So Dr. Janet Travell helped John F. Kennedy deal with the pain. And then she went off and she wrote a book with uh, David Simons. And there was another person involved. Oh, Louise Simons. Look, she's a, um, a physical therapist. So David Simons, Janet Travell, and Louise Simons all wrote this book. This, this is second edition, first edition, I think it was 1983 that it was published. And this is volume one, and there's a volume two, all about the lower body. This is only about the upper body. I know, you can tell that I've read it. I, I, I have a few notes. It was available. It was information out there that could have helped my mom. But she got on all this, all, all this other all medication. So please, can we start thinking in a different direction? Because after seeing um, Robert's mom yesterday, <clears throat> that little lady, she's trying really hard to survive. And she, I don't know her from before, but there's no reason a doctor should send her home with pain medication and having her go through the pain that she's in when it's something that a chiropractor, a napropath, an osteopath um, can help her with. And they can help her. And those are doctors of body sense. And those are doctors of the fascial system. And as much as it is a blasphemy word, and it was a, it's a black word for a, it's a, no sport, it's a sport, a sport. Um, it's, it's a word, uh, fascia is a word in the medical dictionary that is kind of a line is struck through. Just like myofascial trigger points. I've had numerous conversations with physical therapists and there's two camps. One says they don't exist and the other says they do exist. And then there's the people in the middle that get stuck when there's arguments on either side by the medical profession. And my mom has been stuck in that, that middle ground. And um, uh, Robert's mom is definitely stuck in that middle ground. So please, young people and common folk, can we think in a different direction? And I'm going to end with this 6 a.m. morning before my coffee and ask people, pick up a book, read. Here's a new book. It's out. It's great. I'm not done yet. I'm still, I'm still in the beginning. Um, it's available. Anyone can buy it. Anyone can buy it and read. There's some incredible people that have written in there. And I, I just have to show, show, um, okay, so, 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 so. There's, there's a lot of my fascia books that I write in and then I go to these conferences and I get autographs, I'm such a nerd. But here's Dr. Uh, Robert Schleip and then a Jan Wilkie. I know he's young, isn't he? And he works with a lot of sports uh, teams. But here's some of the contributors. Now check it out. Um, all of these are European and look, there's the American. 
Americans might use too many words. I'm American and I'm trying really hard to be more Swedish so that I'm concise, but I have a tendency to ramble. Oh, so here's what we'll end with. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's, let's go. So look, here's fascia function and medical applications. Remember we talked about this guy yesterday, David Lazdonik. There's a book that anyone can buy. Uh oh, hang on. My neighbor is starting up his truck. So you might not be able to hear me, but at least you can read. Yapi, Yapi wrote the first chapter. And then here's an Italian, Dr. Carla Stecco. She's an orthopedic surgeon. She's an orthopedic surgeon, guys. She, she, she's amazing. And she wrote Fascial Anatomy. And then she also has done a lot about um, hormones in fascia. And then here's Rachel Clausen. Here's Dr. Antonio Stecco, Carla's brother. There's Robert Schleip, talks about nerves and fascia. Uh, Anita Bozer and, and Kristen Schumacher about fascia and the circulatory system. Here's about hormone effects. And she's one of the co-authors here. And she's, she a DO uh, or a nurse practitioner? She, she works in the United States, she works in Florida. Oh, it doesn't say. Let's go back. So I don't remember her title, but I know that she met David Lizdonic in um, a class that he had. And um, David helped her son. So when, when somebody's mother, father, sister, brother, um, child, is in pain and somebody puts their hands on them, it's not miracles. If somebody puts their hands on them and then makes them feel better. That is medicine, medicine, that's medicine. It's medicine because it's mechanical medicine because we're working with the biotensegrity, that integral system and it's It's, it's not something woo-woo. Can we start thinking in a different direction? All right. So look at all these chapters. Biotensegrity, a whole chapter on biotensegrity by Mr. John Sharkey. Remember he was that cool um, Irish dude. Irish? I think he's Irish. Keith Barr, there's the American that was in the textbook and, and his bio was this big. Effects of loading. Oh, loading, belastening, loading. That's where your biotensegrity structure has pressure on it. So if it looks like this and you put pressure on it, now it looks like this. So looks like this, you put pressure on it from this straight way then it looks like this. Biotensegrity is a cool thing. Chris Frederick is awesome. He's done a lot of work about fascia. And uh, interstitial notes. And then here's Jill Miller. She's done incredible amount of work. And she and uh, Sue Hitzman with Melt um, are two women that I follow with what they're doing because Jill Miller will tell you first off, um, if, if you don't have the money to go out and buy fancy tools, grab something from the closet and make sure it's soft. So, so I left uh, Robert's mom with a, um, a, a rolled up handuk, a, a rolled up towel underneath her sacrum because her bed is saggy. Her bed is like this. And that poor woman for uh, you know what, her, her son was born in 1964. So if, if uh, uh, Robert's mom was about 20, when 
when he was born. So maybe she was born in 1940s. That's about the same age as my mom. And that's about the same age as uh, Anthony Fauci. We saw his picture earlier. He'll be 81 in December. And he's not walking around with his butt sticking out and his, uh, his, his posture like this because he's in pain. And, and then there's Barbaro Vesterholm. She's 87 and she's actually marching in parades. So let us think in a different direction. My awkward thinking says we can do things different and people that have pain will go to the doctor and they will get treatment and they will go home and they'll start feeling better right away without a, a silly pill that goes throughout their whole system and dims down their cognition. So they fall. Oh, so if, if the only thing you do is go out and buy uh, the book that we've shared, read uh, Jill Miller's um, chapter, chapter 20. He, there's a lot we can do for our own bodies to help our bodies feel better. And there's a lot we can do. And you weren't taught that in school. Oh, and look at David Liston, Listonek. He, he's been working for a long time. Oh, he is at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Okay, University of Pittsburgh. Look at all those new letters after his name. I mean, that reads like an alphabet. I don't know what any of those mean. Besides, this is something about anatomy trains. Really, to me, letters after a name don't mean anything because I've met many doctors and they have letters after their name. And some of them are really good people and some of them I would not invite over for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, and there, oh, there, there's Angelia um, Mount Key. Look at all those letters after her name. She, she's a medical doctor, an intern, a board certified internal medicine, integrative and holistic medicine, anti-aging, regenerative medicine, and has completed additional training in functional medicine. Holy crap, if you have anything wrong and you live in Florida, go see that lady. Over 30 years in uh, clinical practice at the F North Florida Integrative Medicine and Ageless Medical Solutions in Palm Beach. Okay, so if you live in Palm Beach, Florida, check her out. I'm done for today. I'm gonna go refresh my coffee. Um, I'm gonna go blow my nose. Thank you for coming to Masa uh, uh, Swedish Therapist. I, I know I could talk because I'm passionate about this, because I've seen where my mom goes, has gone. And it could have been different. So let's think in a different direction. So you feel good, so your family feels good. And we have a, loss, a lot less reliance on these pills that we put in our mouth, which have to go through our whole system. And remember my awkward thinking, you are seamless which means you're whole, which means if you take something in with your mouth, it goes through everything. It doesn't just affect the stomach. It affects the heart. It affects the ovaries. It affects the brain. And we need good brains. Be well. Taxa hams make it for cold heat. Hey, don't.